Well, hello there, nursing student, or maybe you're a new nurse, or maybe you're a seasoned nurse just looking for some education, or maybe you're just thinking about the profession wherever you are. I've been there. I have been exactly where you are right this minute. So whatever you're doing, wherever you're at, I want you to know you've got a friend who totally gets you. So welcome to the Straighty Nursing Podcast. I'm Nurse Mo. I'm so excited that you're here. Today, I want to share with you some secrets of successful nursing students. I've been doing this series. I kind of spread it out over a while, and I've got 20 total secrets that you can get all at once in a free download. I'll put the link to that in the episode notes, and then I'm diving into them more deeply here on the podcast. So today, we're going through four more Secrets of Successful Nursing Students. Before I take you down that path, I want to take a quick detour for a listener shout out. And this one goes to Caitlin. Hey, Caitlin. Caitlin says, Crucial Concepts Boot Camp was one of my best decisions. It calmed my nerves, dusted off old memories and things I needed to know, and provided valuable tools that have helped me stay on track and sane during my first semester. So Caitlin, thank you a million times over for submitting that feedback. I love hearing how Bootcamp helps you. And if you're interested in learning more about Bootcamp, it is on sale right now. hey oh, it's on sale right now. Check the link in the episode notes or go to learn.straightanursingstudent.com forward slash crucial dash concepts. That's learn.straightanursingstudent.com forward slash crucial dash concepts. So I'll put the link to that in the episode notes. So hopefully you can get as much benefit out of boot camp as Caitlin did. Okay, so we're talking about secrets of successful nursing students. So I feel like I should whisper because it's a secret, but actually I want to shout it from the rooftops because I want everyone to know these secrets. So today we're going to be talking about four of these secrets. Now I have all 20 for you in a free download. Again, I'll put the link to that in the episode notes so you can get them all. And then it's a great compliment to these podcast episodes where I talk about each one in more detail. So the first one I want to share with you is that successful nursing students stay engaged even with those ho-hum, kind of boring online classes. I'm not going to lie. Online classes for some people can be really hard to stay engaged with. But if you're a successful student, you find ways to stay engaged. So staying engaged with those online classes, it can be tough. I'm right there with you. And it definitely feels more passive than actively attending a lecture class. And then if that rec- if that class is recorded and you're just watching it kind of whenever with no live interaction with your classmates, with your instructor... Oh my gosh, can you dial up the yawn factor? For me, that's really, really hard. So I need all the tips I can get to stay engaged. So here's a few tips for that. Tip one is to take your online classes just as seriously as you do your in-person lectures. For me, I think it actually takes more discipline to be vigilant about an online class than it does an in-person class. So it's really important for me especially that I just treat it the exact same way. So this means no multitasking, no distractions. Some easy things to do are to close other browser tabs. Okay, I don't know about you. At any given time, okay, right now I'm looking at my screen. I probably have 30 browser tabs open. I would close all those if I really wanted to focus on my online class. I would turn off the TV. I would turn off any streaming service. I admit I like to watch The Office while I do other things. One cannot watch episodes of The Office and still attend online class. As much fun as that would be, it's not possible. So turning off streaming services, turning off the TV, close your browser tabs, put your phone away, and make sure other people in your household know you are not to be disturbed. Maybe if there's active bleeding, you can be disturbed, but don't come get mom or dad or anybody unless it's absolutely necessary. Now, one of the really tricky distractions with online classes is you're using an electronic device, right? That device itself is full of fun things, right? It's full of things that are way more fun than attending class, but you have to make an agreement with yourself that you'll only watch the lecture during this dedicated time, okay? So pinky promise with me on that one. 
Another tip is to create a designated study area. Now, as great as it sounds to watch or attend your lectures in bed, in the recliner, sitting out by the pool, catching some sun, that's not the most effective way to stay engaged. Designate a specific study area that signals your brain that when you're in this space, it is game on. You are working, you are alert, you are engaged. Now, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. A corner of the dining room table or a desk in your bedroom are fantastic options. Another great tip is to take notes as you go. The physical act of writing notes, jotting down keywords or phrases, and summarizing information is a key strategy for staying engaged in class. And as an added bonus, it helps you retain the information. That's what I call a win-win. It's also important to note that note-taking is not just for lecture-style classes. You can take notes while going through an online module. You can take notes while reading your textbook. And if you're not really sure how to take notes for nursing school, you need to check out Bootcamp. I cover that in a specific module about taking notes and how to learn for nursing school. Okay, so if you're in boot camp, go check out that module. If you're not in boot camp, you might want to check it out. I got a link to that in the episode notes. It's Crucial Concepts Boot Camp. Another great tip is to keep a running list of questions. Now, as you learn new concepts, you're going to have questions, especially if you're really paying attention and really trying to connect concepts. Having questions does not mean you're not getting it. Having questions means you are thinking through things. You are making connections or at least trying to, and you're thinking deeply about the information you are learning and comparing that to what you already know. As you learn new material, think of questions you have about these concepts. Jot them down in your notes and see a if you can answer them yourself as your understanding grows or use them to ask questions in class. It's a fantastic opportunity if you have office hours or an in-person class or a live online class to ask those questions of your instructor. Resist the urge during your lecture. I want to just, this is like a warning sign. Resist the urge to go, I'm just going to go look up this one thing. Because if you go do that, you're going to go down a rabbit hole of that one thing and miss whatever else is happening in your online class. So stay present in the moment. Just jot the questions down for later. Okay? Pinky promise on this one too. Okay. It's also really helpful for some students to get up and move. Online classes could mean sitting at your desk a lot more than usual. Make sure you take some time either between classes or if there's a longer class periodically within that class to stand up, move around, stretch, do jumping jacks, whatever you need to do to get your blood moving, ease that stiffness in your body and just kind of refresh your mind a bit. For bonus points, scheduling actual physical exercise sessions most days of the week really goes a long way to helping your focus and concentration. When you're in an online class, another great tip is to stop with the multitasking, okay? While it may seem like, oh, I'm just checking this one thing, or I'm just quickly looking up this one thing, or I'm quickly going to go get those pens on Amazon, you're not really multitasking. This is task switching. And task switching pulls you out of the experience of learning and causes more fatigue. It's very, very inefficient. So if you find yourself thinking, I'll just do this one thing before I forget, because that's me, right? If I don't do something in the moment, nine times out of 10, I'm going to forget to do it. Or I jot myself a note. So that's what I want you to do. If you find yourself thinking, I'll just do this real quick. I'll just do this one thing. Don't do the thing. Jot a keyword down like I would write pens on a, on a notepad by my desk. And I would, re would remember later, oh, yeah, I'm going to go check out those cool pens on Amazon. Jot it down and do it later. And another tip is to take very full advantage of office hours or any synchronous classes. It's so much more helpful to ask your questions of your instructor in real time than to send an email and wait and wait and wait for a response. 
If your instructor is providing live online classes or office hours or in-person classes, connect with them on a regular basis by asking questions or seeking clarification. Okay, so that was one of the secrets, staying engaged even with online classes. The next secret I want to share with you is that successful nursing students pay attention to the details. Catching a mistake at the bedside or noticing subtle changes in patient condition can literally be what makes the difference between life and death. For this reason, nursing students must have an excruciating attention to detail. Many times your exam questions will rely on a single word that changes everything or an assignment that will have a key piece of information that drastically changes your approach. I can't tell you how many times a student has reached out, emailed me with a question on a dosage calculations problem from my boot camp where the issue was simply they used kilograms when the patient's weight was listed in pounds. Details matter. So some tips for improving or enhancing your attention to detail include slow down. That's probably my number one tip. Slow down because I am a big, um, what's that? I'm super guilty of this one as well. I like to do things fast, right? So slowing down, it's hard for me, but it's super helpful. Being in a rush to read instructions or perform a task or read a test question usually results in mistakes, wasted time, and clinically, even patient harm. You also want to read each exam question fully, as well as the answers. Be careful that your brain isn't filling in words it expects to be there. Okay, so if you're going into an exam question with preconceived notions, your brain, which is super efficient and is always looking for ways to do things faster and easier, can easily fill in gaps that don't actually exist. So read each exam question and all the answers fully. It's also helpful to highlight keywords as you read, paying very careful attention to things like units of measurement and qualifying words such as none or all. Stay present in the moment, even when doing repetitive tasks. When your mind wanders, this is the perfect time for details to get missed. And when you notice you're starting to lose focus, guess what? This is a great time to take a break. The next secret I want to share with you is that successful nursing students make their own study guides. While some instructors will still provide study guides in nursing school, most don't. The truth is they expect you to be very resourceful. They expect you to take responsibility for how you prepare for your exams. Now, just because the instructor doesn't provide you a study guide doesn't mean you won't have a method for studying and that you won't be using a study guide. What it does mean is that you'll likely be creating your own instead of relying on someone to spoon feed you. Because if you're expecting your instructors in nursing school to spoon feed you anything, can I be the first one to tell you that that's not gonna happen? I don't want you to be super disappointed, but it's it, it not happening, okay? Just get that out of your head right now. So some ideas for making your own study guides include use the lesson and course objectives as a guideline. So when you go and you look at your lectures and you get, maybe you get that PowerPoint slides or the instructor shows the PowerPoint slides At the beginning of the lecture, there's usually, if their instructor is providing a well-designed program, there will be a slide or a section that says, these are the learning objectives of what I'm about to teach you. Those learning objectives, that's your study guide right there. So use that as your guideline. You can also write question prompts for every core concept that you learn and then answer them. For example, a question prompt might be, What are the physical manifestations of right-sided heart failure? And then you would write out what you would expect to see in someone with right-sided heart failure. There's your study guide. Or another question prompt might be, 
why do we use diuretics to treat hypertension? And then you would write out how diuretics work, how they affect hypertension, and bam, you got your study guide on that. Make sense? Okay. You can also utilize NCLEX review books to hone in on key concepts and practice answering questions. Make note of any new knowledge that you learn along the way. You can also make a vocabulary list of new terms. You're going to be learning a lot of new terminology, so keeping a list of all of those things is really helpful. You can paraphrase key concepts by writing them in your own words. And then you should consider relationships between concepts, such as the differences between similar conditions, like hypo and hyperthyroidism, for example, or how one condition can lead to another, such as how pulmonary hypertension leads to right-sided heart failure. Another tip is to distill the information for a particular concept or disease down into a single one-page sheet. This forces you to zero in on the things you still need to review and connect key concepts together. And yes, I show you exactly how to do this in Crucial Concepts Bootcamp. You can also create concept maps, tables, and drawings to visually show how concepts connect together, especially if you're a visual learner. And then lastly, successful students know what to review before nursing school starts and between semesters as well, and they take the time to do that review. Now, yes, I am a huge fan of relaxing, recharging your batteries before school starts and in between semesters. I'm also a huge fan of getting super organized during that time frame, but you also need to do a review of some key topics from your foundation knowledge, and that is anatomy and physiology. Understanding some key topics from that very, very important class can help you immensely in nursing school. So successful students take a little bit of time to review the following topics. Fluid compartments and fluid shifts, understanding pressure gradients and tonicity. You learned all this in physiology. It's not like you have to go learn it all over again from scratch a simple review. Renal system physiology is also really important. We use that a lot in nursing, especially when it comes to the balancing of fluids and electrolytes. Take a moment to go back through the renin, angiotensin, aldosterone system. That's that RAS pathway that will serve you well. And then understanding electrolytes and their key roles in the body. What I usually see students doing is spending a lot of energy memorizing the lab values for electrolytes, what's normal, and forgetting that they have to realize the role electrolytes play and what it means if an electrolyte is out of balance. Pay more attention to the physiology of electrolytes. It's also a great idea to review dimensional analysis. You can use that for perfect dosage calculations 100% of the time. Another great thing to review, though I probably think if you're like me, you don't want to do it, but I promise you it will pay off, is to review the autonomic nervous system and neurotransmitters. I know this is a tough one. Along with fluids and electrolytes and the RAS pathway and dimensional analysis, I do give you a review of the autonomic nervous system in Crucial Concepts Bootcamp. You also want to take a look at cardiovascular physiology and really know that blood flow pathway through the heart and through the lungs. That's really important. Respiratory physiology and gas exchange will come in very handy, I promise. And then the mechanisms for maintaining acid-base balance, which I also go over with you in boot camp, really, really key, really helpful to review. So again, you can you can go through these in boot camp with me if you want. You can just dust off your notes from A and P if that makes sense for you. But reviewing some key things from anatomy and physiology is going to really help you understand more complex nursing concepts. So I hope this helps you feel like you've got some secrets under your belt for being an even more amazing nursing student. So As you may have noticed, we've got some bonus episodes happening right now. So instead of me saying, I will see you back here next week, as I usually do, I will actually see you in a couple of days. And I'll be talking with you about going through nursing school 
with ADHD. So if you are subscribed to the podcast or following the podcast, you'll get that episode automatically in your podcast library. So make sure you do that. So I will put the link to everything I talked about in the episode notes, and I'll see you in a couple of days to talk about going through nursing school with ADHD. And even if you don't have ADHD, there's some fantastic study and organization tips in there that really can benefit everyone. So I will see you soon. Bye for now. This podcast is brought to you by Straight A Nursing.